Hey everybody, welcome back to Grand Tactician, the Civil War. This is the Union Campaign starting in the spring of 1861. In this episode, we find the Union Army at the Battle of Culpeper Courthouse, the second one in this campaign in the same area of the wilderness. Uh, we finish up this battle and then after the Battle of Second Culpeper Courthouse, We'll look at the invasion of Western Virginia as Israel B. Richardson's army in that area. McClellan plans on securing Southern Kentucky, that and a whole lot more in the latest episode of Grand Tactician, the Civil War Union Campaign. All right, everybody, let's pick this up where we left off. We have the Battle of Culpeper Courthouse. Hooker's Army of the East with 12,000 men, including, not including, Sherman's Corps of another 7,000 men have confronted the Confederate command, the Confederate command of Joe Johnston, and about 20,000 men confronting us in the wilderness area of Virginia. Much of the first day saw the armies moving into place, Hooker probing to find the Confederate defensive position, and he has found them by the Brock Road line. Hooker sending Garrard's cavalry into the rear area of the rebel position to kind of find a weakness, and the rebel commander sending a few brigades over to address that. Garrard is trying to get orders from Hooker to fall back to Welford House, but is slow to get the orders as he's about to get um, jumped by a rebel brigade here in the rear. Hooker's main force under Sumner's 2nd Division is trying to hit the rebel right flank. Brigade Commander Henry Baker had marched too far ahead of the main columns and has got himself into a bit of a cohesion mess um, luckily, he's not suffering too many casualties, but he's trying to fall back. Sherman's first corps is trying to keep the main rebel position um, in place as they march um, in front of the rebel fortified line along the Orange Plank Road. So we're going to pick this battle up right where we left off. It's about 10 in the morning on July 15th. The weather is mostly clear, 83 degrees. Hooker's advance uh, with Sumner's division plus Garrard trying to fall back to avoid a major catastrophe on his position there. So why don't we get this going? If Garrard gets his orders in time before he comes under um, assault from the rebels marching towards him, still not getting the order. We ha I believe we had detached him. Oh, he has artillery. We should just charge those guns. Let's see, Andrew Smith sure got the order pretty quickly, at least. Gerard won't fall back, but at least um, Andrew Smith is charging. And then he's sent back. Before he reaches the gun, he pulls back. Let's try this with assault column on. All right, come on. Stop. Oh, they just stop and fall back. Well, I ain't do not have time for these shenanigans so why don't we fall back the entire column and it looks like Gerard might be just falling back now he's on his own initiative let's take a look at how hooker's column is doing marching on the rebel right flank and it looks like they're in good order still don't know what's going on exactly with baker's brigade we can use those 1500 men though i don't know if we need to rally him but they don't look like they're a cohesive force there as they're winded but engaged cohesion is good now reynold captain william reynolds has gotten into position i don't think he's firing on any units though all right gerard has finally started marching back but now smith is left on his own devices so why don't we order him back? All right, Garrard's cavalry is falling back finally, so they did not lose too many men. About 12 there, 13, about 25 total. Hooker is now in position, although he's waiting for Runyon's brigade under Buell there and some artillery under Burnside to uh, join him. Baker's still not formed up completely as 
his cohesion. Must be having a tough time in this terrain. Um, a lot of skirmishing going on, though, between the skirmish lines under Hinman and John Reynolds and Nathan Kimball. So we've been able to get Baker to reform as he's come under Runyon's command radius. So I think that's helping him reform his line. Um, Runyon, though, Buell has not advanced. I thought we had ordered him to. So all kinds of command troubles under, under Runyon. We have asked Sumner to move ahead anyways with his 4,800 men and try to hit Hinman here, who is... Um, overlapped his entrenchments will probably push forward with Williams's division as well so why don't we do that we're gonna push ahead with Williams looks like the Confederates might be advancing too closely to the Orange Plank Road all right so Williams starts moving forward same with Sumner and it looks like the rebels might be trying to go on the offensive themselves which actually would play into our advantage as they come out of their entrenchments there. We've had Gerard fall back to our far left and rear to kind of guard that line. So he's ordered back there, and he's back on the move. Now we have heavy fighting against uh, Williams here. We've ordered Williams to try to stop his entire command as they've run right into the rebels who uh, surprisingly have moved forward. Um, in this campaign, we have feuding going on, so Hood... Hood's division decided we're not going to wait around any longer and go on the offensive. So now we're in a heavy engagement. Really, real tense fighting in the wilderness. But our guns are, now that Hood's division advanced, we're able to get some artillery fire on them. We've got some cavalry on our far right, too, that can come in and probably hit Hood on the flank. So Hood's division has exposed their right flank even more to Sumner. So Sumner's going to order his men forward. We're going to actually let, why don't we order Carlton's cavalry division too to maybe take up these guns supporting Hood and his attack. We're going to dismount Buford and then order him to assault Walker. But we're actually going to keep Whiting uh, on horseback in the rough terrain though and try to take the guns with by force okay, orders are sent let's see what happens here in the in the climax of the battle i see buford coming in those are his scouts though Let's see, uh, Keyes' uh, brigade is getting ripped up, though, so we're going to have to have him fall back. So we have Keyes falling back, and then Lovell's brigade is right here to take over. Plus, we're going to dismount Palmer's cavalry in support. Plus, we have Sykes on the flank and an entire division under Sumner also on the flank that we're going to call on, call on to move forward. So Reynolds and Kimball will put pressure on Hood's right flank. And we have Buford now in position to take on this artillery. We're going to have Whiting come in and just take him by a charge. All right, let's see what happens here next. All right, Key's falling back. Um, let's see, French is idle. Morgan is firing, though. The artillery is firing on Buford. Keys breaks, though. But we should be able to take these this battery, which will help. And we've got them in the rear, too. So Buford could probably put some fire on the Confederates' left flank. So we've got Hood all hemmed in. Although it looks like Sykes and the lot are not advancing as much as I'd like them to. The Whiskey Zawabs, trying to get them forward. You can see the Confederates are starting to break on their left as Buford has got them in on the flank. 
All right, Sumner with his division trying to move forward with the Whiskey Zwabs are starting to get the Confederates on their right flank. Sykes is taking some heavy casualties, although he's engaged McClaw's brigade. Confederate reinforcements arrive. Walker's battalion is wiped out. So nice job by Carlton again and his cavalier. Or his cavaliers. And we've inflicted 2,100 casualties. But really, if Hood would have stayed in place... I think it would be a lot tougher battle for us to dislodge the Confederates from that position they were in. So it looks like the Confederates are putting in, uh, bringing in all kinds of reinforcements, though, into this box, though, that we've created. This firebox that we have them in a nice crossfire. I'd still like to get a little bit more behind. We can get Reynolds to keep advancing in around the Confederate position here. See, um, William Burns might be able to take these guns. So let's order him to advance. See, the Confederate rear guard is coming towards the Welford House and Gerard's cavalry, who has fallen back to Catherine Furness. They can try to just slow down that advance. It looks like we'll gain the victory, though, before that even happens. All right, let's see if we can get the Rebel Commander, Joe Johnston, to break here. Though there's still uh, a contingent of Rebels just stubbornly in the wooded terrain, although it looks like they're getting all kinds of fire from the flank and rear. Whiting took quite a few casualties, though, maybe from this battery. He's taking artillery fire, maybe from the batteries over here. Let's try to get Burns to get into attack column. I want to take these guns. Let's order Reynolds forward. Let's send the rest of Sumner forward if they will take the command. Sykes took quite a few casualties. We've inflicted 3,500 to our 1,400. Although you can see the some more rebel brigades starting to fall back in disorder. Right, I want Burns to take these guns. Reynolds has gotten in and behind the rebel position. But we might order him to take these this battalion under Kemper. This creek here though has been Blocking Burns' assault. Right, the enemy is retreating. So we're going to order Reynolds into a assault column and try to charge the broken rebel units. Same with Burns as he's going to try to take those guns. We've asked Whiting to get back on um, their horses. Uh, let's take that battery, although I don't think they remounted. Um, Buford actually took it upon himself to charge Buckner's brigade. We can actually probably have Palmer remount and try to run down some fleeing rebels. Uh, Reynolds' detachment was broken. I'll let these guys run away. If Palmer's back on their horses. Maybe we can take these guns. Looks like the rebels are maybe getting away a little bit. Palmer, though, rushing. But he hits the creek. And we have Reynolds now trying to grab Johnson's brigade. We're trying to order all the units to try to run down the fleeing rebels as we've inflicted 6,500 casualties, 35% casualty rate for the major victory so far. So mis miscalculation by Hood's over aggressiveness as our methodical advancement on in the wilderness caused Hood to jump the gun, disobey Joe Johnston, and go on the offensive to our surprise and to our luck, too. It gave us the advantage. So, Battle of Culpeper Courthouse. Battle of Culpeper Courthouse. Second one in this campaign has ended with the Army of Potomac retreating in panic. My command has earned us a vi total victory with the enemy army running for their lives. 48 
Uh, 485 killed, 2,800 captured. The morale is believed to be stable. We've captured 4,300 rifles, 32 guns. Colonel Buckner loses face. With that victory in the middle or the north, northern part of Virginia around the Rappahannock, that should send the Confederates reeling back, although it looks like there's a might be another division there that is not engaged in that battle and won't be retreating. Let's see where they retreat to. They retreat south, although the one unit seems to be staying in place. It looks like the Hampton Division, not engaged, is staying there while the Army of the Shenandoah that was engaged in the Battle of Culpeper Courthouse is not retreating back but staying in place with that victory. National morale for the rebel cause is down to 89 Still pretty high. They have managed to field 75,000 men to our 99,000. Still have an advantage in weapons industry so far in the early war. For that battle, we had Israel E. Richardson and the Army of West Virginia trying to uh, secure Wheeling, West Virginia. So he's still occupying that town in Western Virginia. Looks like the Confederates have advanced on to Bowling Green in southern Kentucky as we did take men away from McClellan at Lexington to invade West Virginia. We have a force, though, the Ohio Reserves in training that we can use to reinforce McClellan. Take a look and see what we might be facing. Only about 9,000 men um, in southern Kentucky, so we might be able to reinforce McClellan and move towards Bowling Green in a summer campaign there the western reserve is moving to cairo to headquarter there but that's a training force for the western armies the army of the west under david hunter has moved to frederick town in eastern missouri building a fort and supply depot there while a garrison force remains at st louis under rufus king they are also fortifying st louis the Missouri State Guard, though, as our main adversary, so far estimated strength only 3,500. One thing McClellan's army is lacking is some cavalry, although we have cavalry in training, not yet ready. Although we're probably going to reinforce McClellan with Walter's division of men that he can maybe campaign. We'll probably send him on campaign to Bowling Green, Kentucky, even without the cavalry. Will the cavalry be ready soon? And a little bit of housekeeping here. We William Wells from Vermont in charge of the Vermont Redheads um, by request of H. Mu Buddha, a commenter. And again, anyone new to this campaign, if you want to name a unit, feel free to do so. Uh, we will rename the unit after your desire. Again, please keep this within reason. And we will also honor any request for generals to the best we can to our ability so we have reinforced mcclellan with the units from the ohio reserves and that brings him up to about fifteen thousand men we have the ohio engineers building the fortifications mcclellan is in good supply uh 91 percent supply ratio so why don't we let him gather up some more supplies first before we have him send him out to bowling green uh, we can strike at bowling green quickly and then try to build up a depot or stop along the way at Munfordville, maybe. Depot up there, then move on to Bowling Green. So we might actually do that. We might advance on Munfordville first. Actually, get a gauge and see what the rebel commander will do. Let's check uh, McClellan's army for weapons. Humphreys has the Enfield rifle musket. That's good. We still are stuck with some mixed cavalry weapons. The mixed muskets, so why don't we see what we have available. All right, we're able to get Heinzelman some reboard muskets. So not a lot to di uh, distribute mixed cavalry weapons still, so nothing good there. Bryce, so we're still stuck with mixed muskets. Nothing, um, not a lot of weapons to draw from yet. Let's wait for reinforcements to arrive to McClellan in three days, and then we'll head out to Munfordville. All right, so the rest of Joe Johnston's army does retreat back. We stay in place. We won't pursue. We're going to build up our fortification there on the Rappahannock um, and make sure that our army gets well supplied, and they are. All right, McClellan is ready to move out. We're going to send the orders in 
But he's going to advance on Munfordville. I'm just going to use rail movement. Wheeling almost under our control as Richardson trying to consolidate that town into the Union side. Probably another day there. And Wheeling will be part of the Union again. So that only drops national morale for the Confederates down to 87. The Confederates again engage us across the Rappahannock. This time with 31,000 men. McClellan has arrived at Munfordville. We're going to set him to build a depot. We'll probably just build the depot at Munfordville and then move on Bowling Green and fortify Bowling Green. He's also got a perk. We'll do flying column one. Very antithetical to McClellan's nature, but we'll, he'll get it. What I think we might try to do here is draw in the Army of the Shenandoah and this Engineer Brigade to reinforce Hooker here at Culpeper Courthouse. We have dug in. We we went, we changed the defensive stance, but it looks like we might lose the siege battle. We are pretty well outnumbered, though. So maybe we should actually fall back. Actually, no. We're going to double time Shields men. So that's another 8,000 men there. We have uh, Mansfield, the Army of Washington, the Washington Garrison. Those are actual the, the regulars. So we're going to actually order Mansfield to reinforce. So we're going to bring everything in here. And let's see. So, yep, they quickly get there. Shields will be there as well before they resolve that siege battle. Units are routing, it looks like on the Confederate side. Shields, though, a little bit slower, marching in a thunderstorm. So on paper, it looks like we have a much more even battle here. Um, it looks like we would probably win the siege battle, but we're going to assault... Magruder's force here. See if we can't score a victory. It looks like we've a lot of their units have routed already, so we'll probably catch their army in a very bad condition. Some of our units look like they're low on morale as well. Let's go on with this battle. Let's see if we can't finish off Magruder. The third battle of Culpeper Courthouse finds us back on the Chancellorsville map. There is one objective which is not taken, although our starting zone is right next to it. We should be able to grab it, snatch it up, maybe form a defensive position um, near right over there on the river road. We could probably use the river, the Rappahannock, as a anchor towards us. The Confederates are probably coming from the south. Hooker is two hours away. We actually have Sherman on the field of battle right now. Well, his morale is stable. Probably has a lot to do with the siege battle that was ensuing. Although, yep, so they're already starting off in a wavering condition. And Mansfield is one hour away. Hooker, two hours away. We even have the, and Shields is two hours away. This is a meeting engagement. Although we should be able to take over the defensive position. But we've deployed Sherman to take advantage of the starting zone where we can grab the objective and then take over the initiative but on the defensive forcing the confederates to try to take our victory objective i built some forward parapets um across the rappahannock to kind of as act as a bridgehead for our reinforcing cores that should be coming from the northeast possibly the north Booker reinforced scheduled two hours expected to arrive from Fredericksburg. So that should be over towards the maybe even the east here. This might act as a good anchor from Rappahannock at this ford. Although the battle starts at midnight. So we'll see if we advance on to the next day right away as it is nighttime. Um, as the rebels try to maybe attack in the middle of the night. We'll see what happens. All right, we're going to leave it right here, though, and we'll pick up the next battle of Culpeper Courthouse on the next one. I do appreciate your time. I will see you on the next one. Take care.